Hi everyone, this is Tom Mackey. This is another video in our series about filters. And today we're going to be covering ND grads, or neutral density grads. So first off, what is a neutral density grad, if you don't know already? Uh, I'm going to show you. So basically it is an acrylic filter, like such. Uh, half of it is clear, and the other half transitions up to a darker tone. And these are all about controlling the light. So you ha they come in various different uh, degrees. Let me show you the transitions first. So you have a soft transition there, and then you have a medium transition. Uh, that one. And then you have a hard transition. It's like juggling here. Okay, there we go. So you would use these in different circumstances depending on what's at your horizon line. If you've got a regular horizon line, some subjects poking up or whatever. But as you can see, it's fairly flat here. So I would tend to go with a hard transition on this. Now they come in various different um, sizes. The ideal size, I think, for landscape photography and for the work I do is the 100 by 150 millimeter, which is what I have here. The reason behind that is if you had the smaller ones, um, like Koken, for example, they make some quite small ones. If you've got a wide angle lens and you're moving this around and you want to angle this a little bit, you don't have a lot of real estate on the filter to actually maneuver it and adjust. With this, you've got plenty. Uh, obviously, when you get into specialty lenses such as the 14 to 24 or any of those really wide lenses that have this bulbous filter at the front, you have to have a special holder and larger filters. Um, I personally, right now, I don't choose to ch uh, carry larger filters like this. I like to have everything in this pack. It's very compact. It suits about 99% of my shooting. So uh, that covers the what is a filter. Now we're going to go into why would you use filters. So especially with the um, sensors nowadays that are so, you know, they got some, so much of a dynamic range. Why would you even use filters? A lot of people say, you know, and a lot of guys have actually thrown their filters away or sold them on eBay. But I think it's all about controlling what you have. I know these sensors, you can push them to the limits. In fact, we did a video earlier about pushing the D850 sensor to the limits, but it's not about pushing the sensor to the limit. You want to control uh, the light and get as much information on that sensor as possible without pushing it to the edges. So you're blow, blowing your highlights or blocking up your shadows. You want to contain all that within your histogram. So you've got a beautiful histogram. You've got a lot more information to play with in post-processing later. Okay, so you can see behind me, you can see this dark foreground of the field and then the sky is quite light tone. So how do you know what filter to use? So you can do the technical way of metering for the foreground and metering the sky and the differential between those two exposures, that's the filter that you would use. So for example, if you had a two-stop differential between the sky and the foreground, use a two-stop grad on it. But um, that's quite technical. And for me, I know I've, I've been doing this for a long time. It comes quite natural when I'm looking at a scene, I can just say, oh, this is gonna require a two-stop. Um, you could do the suck it and see method. Uh, just put a filter in there. If it looks too light and it's still not balancing out, then try a heavier one or vice versa. Uh, it's much quicker, but uh, it's all personal preference. So what metering mode should you use? Uh, I think this is all down to personal preference. Uh, a lot of guys use manual and a lot of guys use aperture like myself. Now, I like to see what I'm getting at the time, and you can also use this using Live View. So the beauty of using Live View, if we switch that on, and we'll take a, right there. When you slide that down in Live View, you can see the transition, you can see it changing. And what's happening is it's bringing up the foreground tone and it's darkening the sky, so it's evening out that exposure uh, variance. Now, a little tip, when you bring this down to the horizon line, a lot of people tend to actually bring the grads down too far, and then you get that telltale dark horizon line. 
So a little tip, especially like right now, I'm shooting at f14. The smaller the aperture, the more um, evident that transition is going to be. So when you bring it down to the horizon, bring it down there, and then just back it off slight. Now you can also use your uh, depth of field preview button to see how that line is actually affecting the whole scene and where it's actually sitting on the horizon. Okay, and then we'll just make an exposure there. Yes, it's now that's really nice and even. We've got a beautiful histogram and I'm exposing over to the far right as much as I can. But you know, I've got plenty of information there to, uh, to work with. So don't think of grads as just sticking over the sky like I did here. Think of it as a light management system. So whatever scene you're doing, say, even if you're doing, say, a, a, a seascape where you don't even have any sky, but you have some really bright sand in the foreground or rocks, and it's, it's taking up that part of the scene and it's overpowering it. So you wanna just maybe pull your grad in here and just slide it in from the bottom. Now I wouldn't use, in those circumstances, I wouldn't use a hard edge like this. I would then go to a soft edge, then it blends much easier. So you can slide them in from the bottom, uh, tilt them around whichever way you like. So they don't have to be used straight in like that. You know, they can be turned around however you like. So I've even used two grads together on occasions, very extreme occasions like this, where if you can see, as I turn that up, I'm getting this really dark center line here. But that brings me on to another grad, the reverse grad which does exactly, hang on, let's get the reverse grid out here. There we go. So we have that dark center line here, and this is used more for shooting sunrises, sunsets, where your horizon line is much brighter than the rest of the scene. So this is balancing out the light in that scene. So filters aren't cheap, but my advice is to spend as much money as you can afford and to get good quality filters. There's no reason to cut corners and put a cheap piece of uh, plastic in front of that really nice quality lens that you just bought. So buy the best you can afford and you won't regret it. So at the end of the video, you'll see uh, some shots that I did tonight using no filter. So you can see the difference between the sky and the, and the um, foreground. And then one with a three stop and then a two stop and also some images that uh, I've taken out of my collection uh, to show you the effect of using the ND grads. So I hope this has been useful. Uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks again for joining me today, and I'll see you again soon.